All right. Let's do this. So one of the smallest things in my collection <clears throat> is my code red, is the amount of code reds I got. Basically that is because, and today we've got Crystal Pepsi, by the way. Code red's not easy to get in my area. <clears throat> now, if you're familiar with the company Code Red itself, uh, you know that they put out like an eclectic mix of stuff and there's like AB Movie Archives, there's kind of like a, the owner is having some health issues right now, I think, but uh, <clears throat> there's been some, uh, it's been a controversial company or uh, outspoken in, in a different way. So what I got today is I got my Code Reds, uh, but what I thought I'd do is before I showed you my haul, hey Scalder, before I showed you what I got today in Code Red, I'm going to show you what I've already got today in Code Red. Basically, I'm going to show you my Code Red collection. I'm going to follow that up with my haul. <coughs> it's going to be a pretty small collection because, uh, as I mentioned before, they're not easy to get. And unless you live in a place like Ontario or something like that, or you got like a really great store, like a Bay Street video type of thing, you don't get like Code Red coming into a store. However, through like viewers like you and stuff, I was able to, to uh, acquire a few Code Reds and some that I picked up recently at Bay Street Video. So I'm going to go with them. I got them in numerical order and uh, we'll check them out. So I actually have number one of the uh, of Code Red, the first one they put, that was put out because they number these. Uh, sometimes they forget to put the numbers on. You'll, you'll get that. You'll see what that means in a minute. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I uh, haven't Actually, I was a friend of mine actually just got the Renegade Surname stuff today. And another one just found out that, uh, actually, Steph, I think, just found out that hers is like should be delivered this evening. So hopefully, that's, good signs for, that's a good sign for you. So the first one I got is this one here. And that is the electric chair. And this is number one in the code red. And uh, as you can see, it has a. Uh, Katrina on the back of it. Now she's a uh, kind of the horror host. She does a lot of stuff for Scorpion releasing, and uh, I don't remember this. Movie. I don't think I've watched this film since I picked it up. To be completely honest with you, I do like her because she played Winter on TNA and she was in like WWE for a while. Um, but it's actually Code Red releases are pretty, you know, usually pretty simple, especially the early stuff. But has any has anybody here seen the electric chair? Because looking at the back of it now, it looks kind of cool. I haven't got around to it yet. That's the complete honest truth. So, uh, but it's got Larry Drake in it. So I'll definitely pick it, pick it up and watch it down the road. Next up is one of my favorite Code Red releases, and that's number 13. And uh, this one, I, uh, I recommend if you only get one Code Red release this <laughs> year. Uh, make sure that you uh, you got this one. You haven't heard of it? See, that's the thing. I'll be honest, I would love to say, oh, yes, I've heard of it and stuff. Then I'd be lying to you. <clears throat> Went through customs. Oh. Hopefully you didn't get hit with customs. Um, what kills me is I was, I literally stayed up all night last night to, to, the, to today to wait for a package to come from my better half, from UPS. I wouldn't go to the washroom. I wouldn't do anything. Uh, now get this they stuck a sticker on the window of my door they did not knock on my door they stuck a sticker on the window of my door of, of my door and I thought I heard something so I threw on a t-shirt ran to the door there's a sticker there they're gone so somebody wanted to get their Friday started early but I was kind of peeved and I, I tried to explain to my better half, and she's like, are you sure you didn't hear the knock? Are you sure you weren't upstairs? Are you sure you weren't asleep? No, no, I wasn't, and that was frustrating. Okay, number 13, that's on the edge of the park. Uh, I love this movie. I really do. This is a Ruggiero Diodato film. Uh, stars the late David Hess. And uh, as, as for his roles, people go with, like, Last House on the Left and Hitchhike. 
for me, this is the best Hess uh, film, uh, playing that that style role. Uh, Hess was a musician, and uh, you know he would later on go on and you know he direct as well. Uh, but most people know David Hess for uh, playing these really grimy, sleazebally type characters. Uh, he he mastered it. That was, he was he was the master of that type of role. Uh, in actuality, he was like a really nice guy. Um, what's kind of the th one thing he does not want to talk about on here is uh, if you've ever seen House on the Edge of the Park, there's a, no surprise, there's like a, a rape sequence at the beginning of the film <clears throat> and uh, in the back of this car. And when interviewers brought this uh, this fact up, he would get really pissed off. Uh, that was his wife, actually, playing the, playing the role. Well, the girl that would become his wife. Uh but he didn't like talking about that. He didn't like to. Uh... I got to say, as you guys know, I ordered this last week, like uh, not very long ago. So, uh, you know, kudos to Screen Archives because this came in, 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 what, five or six days? You guys remember when I was on here, like actually telling you guys that I, that I did this order. This, this order I did not expect for a while. And I'll show you the order in a minute. I'm just going through my Code Red collection first. But definitely... <clears throat> Hey there, Ivy. Thanks. Welcome to the movie club. You're now a member. Uh, John, <laughs> I knew you'd like this one. And what's cool about this one, there's a lot of features here. On-camera interview with David Hess, uh, John Morgan, Carolina Mardik. On-camera interview with the director, Rigur, the Udata Steel Gallery, original trailer. Like, just always check this stuff out. <clears throat> Next up is a slasher film that I actually really like. Um... Uh, and uh, it's got like a kind of a native aspect to it, like this, as well, like a Native American. And I am a, I'm Native Canadian, so that's a, that, that's actually kind of cool. And that is Sweet Sixteen, one of the best covers actually. Uh, stars Dana Kimmel from, uh, of course, Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. And uh, this is actually a really really good film. Underrated, one of the le one of the lesser known, unfortunately, slasher films out there. Eight eight films put out in the UK, uh, but uh, <clears throat> again, you know, awesome cast. Bo Hopkins is in this one here. Uh, God, who else is in this one? It's a bunch of people in this one actually. Uh, Patrick, yeah, Patrick McNee is in it as well. Uh, Susan Strasberg, incredible film. If you have not checked it out, if you're a slasher fan, Sweet Sixteen definitely one to check out. It's number sixteen. In the code red collection gotta love that numbering gotta love the cover definitely check it out <clears throat> next up you got the 88 one is one of my is one that definitely recommend this is a movie that eventually i keep putting it up i gotta do it uh, we'll do a uh a stream with jace about uh about western films we got to get that done soon uh this is one of my faves and uh i was surprised that this got like some some notice but cutthroats nine is like a, like a spanish western film i think it's it's pretty gory uh, there's definitely like some like kind of murder and i'm not when you wouldn't call it slasher but there's like some some very violent aspects so this is a violent violent western but i'm a huge fan of cutthroats nine if you've never seen it uh definitely check it out does it uh this is really good. Actually, this was a surprise for me. Um, I'm pretty sure, more than likely, I found out about this movie through my dad. Because uh, my dad's a huge Western fan. And this is uh, this was a good one. It surprised me. Is it really? <laughs> Can I throw it tonight? I don't know, dude. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, if... You can let me know if any of these are out of print, because I really, I have no idea. I don't even know to look where it comes to, like, is this out of print or not, to be complete, completely honest with you. I'm sure there's, like, websites or something like that. Next up is one that's really bad. It's, it's a horrible film, but for some reason, I really like it. It's got a great cover. Um, but I just, there's just something about the film that I, that I enjoy. And, oh, by the way, Cutthroats 9 is number 27 in the Code Red Collection. So this is The Forest. And this one is, this is a film. Uh, 
Has anybody seen the forest? Much like this is a movie that if you've got Don't Go in the Woods alone. Remember Don't Go in the Woods alone? Jesse, you remember that movie? You know, the 80 film Vinegar Syndrome, they put it out. Hopefully you've got it. You've seen it at least. Uh, double feature it with this. This is worse. This is worse than Don't Go in the Woods Alone. But you'll enjoy it. It'll be fun. Actually has some de decent actors in it, surprisingly. Uh, you know, mostly like TV actors and stuff like that. Like people like, you know, like Stafford Morgan, Gary Kent. You know, not not huge actors. Corky Pigeon. I'm going to grab some tea. That's what I'm getting after this, actually. But again, The Forest is number 59. <clears throat> in the uh, in the code red collection, it's uh, if you like Don't Go in the Woods Alone, you got to pick this one up because it's a uh, again, it, it's it's it, it's a film. It's not a good film, but it's an enjoyable film. Hey, Cropsy man, how's it going? I got to coat my code red stuff today, so I'm going through my code red collection, and then right afterwards, I'm going to unbox the code reds that I just got. I actually literally had them over there. I've cut open the box, but they're still in there. In their bubble wrap. I haven't opened them up or looked at them yet. Got them about like three or four hours ago. But I had to... Uh... Yep, I just said it's Corky Pigeon. That's the name. That's that's the real name. Apparently Corky Pigeon was on a Andy, Silver Spoons, which is a show that I did used to watch with Ricky Schroeder. I didn't watch with Ricky Schroeder. He was in it. Cool. Yeah, right. It is a cool name, though. Okay, so this is one of my favorites, and this is number 69, and it is... Perfectly numbered, and that is a Jose, Jose Larraz's film *Black Candles*. This is one of my favorite of his films. I, I'm not going to lie; uh, it is purely gone into the sexploitation aspect of it. Uh, it's a satanic film with a ton of nudity and a uh, ton of ton of sex, and it's a uh, Jose Ramon Larraz. Who I, that uh, that made this, and of course he made a ton of like films, vampires, uh, symptoms, which is one that I got from Mon Macabre, which is a great release. Well, we're getting into Code Red now, dude, and this weekend I'm going to try to do a Arrow video one for you. Now, see this, see Symptoms is a restrained film, uh, really good. That you're gonna that you can enjoy and you can watch back and you can sip and it's 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 a late film. This is crazy. Uh, this in all the best ways. It's got a uh, a, a, a ton of nudity uh, because because it does, <laughs> and uh, it's weird. I will. I will let you know, like right out of the gate, it's it's a weird film. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, but yes, and it also has uh, a a a fake goat. Like you, you just you would have to see it. It's it's, it's one of those satanic films. Uh, really strange. Uh, <laughs> next up is one that I think 88 Films has recently put out as well, and that is number 94 in the Code Red collection. And this is The Hills Have Eyes, Mind Ripper. <laughs> yeah, same here. Flash, same for me. <laughs> um, so Lance Henriksen, Giovanni Ribisi. Don't remember it. Could be a good film. I personally do not remember this film. So there we go, Mind Ripper. Some, for some reason, Cloud Hills of Ice 3. Maybe it's got something to do with Lewis Craven. I don't know. That's one of the films I haven't watched yet. <laughs> um, but next up is one that I do know and I do love. And why is these out of order? Uh, I always get peeved when my things go out of order, like numerically. I'm 
OCD with that stuff. And this is Hide and Go Shriek. This is one that I really, really like. Uh, I'm a huge slasher fan. Uh, this is one of those kind of like just simplistically well done slasher films. Um, no, I can't think. I don't think there's any really big, like a really big cast in it. Uh, just, just a fun little ride. Romp like I think it's set at this. I'm not sure if it's an apartment store or some kind of place. Anyway, like at, over, overnight, where kind of think like chopping mob with an actual killer instead of like robots. Uh, so it's it's kind of that type of thing. Yeah, it is fantastic 80s cheese, and I love hide and go shriek. I'm actually kind of excited to get to my stuff that I bought. <laughs> Welcome back. No, not really. <laughs> Basically, uh, there's these people that are staying overnight to do work into this in the store, warehouse type area. I think it's a store. Uh, and little do they know that there's a killer there uh, as well that's kind of like not knocking off. So it's, uh, it's actually really well done. Next up is an 80s classic that stars Meg Tilly and... Have I saw any moves in the theater? No, but I'm going... I may be going to the to the drive-in this weekend to see a couple. Nightmare Beach, I gotta get, because I love that film. One Dark Night. So this is, yes, the late Adam West. Really nice guy. Uh, Meg Tilly, of course, from Psycho 2, and, you know, sister of Jennifer Tilly. I wish I would have seen Meg Tilly more. Now, Tom McLaughlin did this one from, you know, Friday 13, Part 6. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun 80s kind of cheese fest, kind of fun one. Next up is number 150. And uh, that is The Being. You prefer Meg Tilly to her sister? Well, I can, I can see that, sort of. I I got a thing for, uh, for Jennifer Tilly. I like, uh, but it's like kind of the full body, I just personal preference, I guess. But I, I would totally be an of Meg Tilly, to be totally honest with you. They would both be on that Google Doc list. I think what I really enjoy about Jennifer Tilly is she's not at all what you think, uh, is that she looks like this like sex bomb, like goddess type character. And she's this like, kind of like extremely smart, you know, analytical poker player. Um, and uh, she takes people unaware, basically. Psycho 2 broke my heart a bit because I really liked her character. <laughs> Smile alert for a movie that came out years ago. Uh, it, the Vice does throw people out. So the being fun, cheesy monster film. If you haven't seen it, it's, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Next up is number 152, and that is The Witchmaker. This one uh, was, was a uh, gift from me, actually, from, uh, from James. And this one is, uh, so was the other one, actually. It came from Ronan Flicks, I'm guessing, because it has that slip cover, and the slip covers are, are usually kind of like limited, either Ronan Flicks or Diabolik DVD, I think. Uh, so this is The, uh, the Witchmaker. Next up is Phyllis Diller uh, and, uh, and Norman Fell in the movie The Boneyard. And that is number 162. That's just kind of a, kind of a fun one. Yeah, it's surprisingly nice slip. I was surprised by that one. And this one, like I told you before, <sighs> oh, it would be awesome if Code Red did a deal with Vinegar Syndrome. That would be the best way to get their stuff out there. Can you see which one? Boneyard? <laughs> sure. It's a different film. Oh, Witchmaker, okay, I was gonna say. I was kind of wondering about that. Okay, so this is The Witchmaker. I really love this kit, this cover here. And there's the interior cover. As you can see, I kind of like this one better. I'm not sure if there's a extra cover on the inside or not, or if it's the same one. That's the same one. I, uh, I heard that he is. Uh, it was Jennifer Tilly in Psycho. She's the lead, actually. She's the lead, uh, she's the lead girl. So when you're watching Psycho 2 and you see the girl that kind of like uh, works with Norman and then she goes and she starts living with him, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's Meg Tilly's character. 
she's the uh, the one that actually moves in with uh, moves in with Norman. And there's a little twist to it, there's, but uh, that's her. She actually starts to fall in love with Norman. Cut and run. What number is this? I don't know. Neither does Code Red apparently, because because they forgot to number it. But there you go. Cut and run. Again, you guys know I like the Yodato stuff, most of it. I don't like the animal cruelty stuff type thing. I'm not a big cannibal fan, but I do like this. This actually one is, this one is actually pretty cool. Got a really good cast, too, in, uh, in this film. We got, like, Lisa Blunt, Leonard Mann, Willie Ames, Richard Lynch. I love Richard Lynch. Uh, Michael Berryman's in this. John Steiner, of course, from Tenebrae. Hey, Vinny, welcome, dude. You're coming for the right part. I just finished the collection part, but I'm just about to unbox my, uh, my Code Red that I got. So... As you guys can see, oh really? I just got it. It's still in its bubble wrap. <clears throat> so Screen Archives has wrapped this pretty well. I, I do have the. I don't go with Screen Archives a lot because sometimes the shipping can be a little bit. Well, it's not too bad, but there's always that shipping warning: pay an extra forty eight dollars, or we cannot like ensure your package will get you, which kind of freaks me out every time. Um, but every time it gets me in a week. So uh, kind of dig that. So we got six code reds to look at here. They have, if you haven't been here in a while, you're not gonna know what the theme is to these code reds. If you have been, then uh, you will. I wanna get these in order, so give me a second. Okay, this is going to be an issue, I think, because if these aren't... Okay, there we go. I want to do them numerically. So, I've got number... I bought number 35, and... Oh, yeah, apparently this is another one of the Katrina, like, action ones. And that is the Devastators. So, this one looks like a lot of fun. I actually really like the trailer for this one here. I don't think... I, I've probably seen it, but I don't remember it anyway. But it's got Kate Shea in it, and I really like her. And, of course, Richard Hill from, um, what was it again? What's that movie? Dragon Slayer? Not Dragon Slayer. Uh, not Beastmaster. One of those type of movies. You know, the Richard Hill, he's from, I'm sure it's on the back of this. Death Stalker. There we go. Uh, Devastator? I don't know, actually. I don't see, a.k.a. The Destroyer. So, the other name for this is The Destroyer. So, maybe you, you saw it under that name. But there are special features here, including an interview with Terrence O'Hara, uh, fun facts and trivia, however that's done. And uh, this is a brand new HD remaster of the film that was done back in 2015. Uh, again, a, a great cast. I love these style of films. I love these. See, me and my better half watch these together. She's a huge fan. If you want to know the type of films that that uh, that my better half likes, she likes these, these style films. She likes the cheesy action films. Like, she would like Blast Fighter. You're bad man. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well. Uh, no, that's a much different film. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's Lyle Lozado, actually. Ozado, who was in uh, a, a, a Canadian uh, situation comedy where he played a teacher by day and a wrestler by night. That's what I remember from, anyway. I know because the girl that used to be on Degrassi Junior High actually went, left Degrassi to go on to that show. I think it was like Learning the Ropes or something like that. Weird trivia, anyway. <laughs> uh, but no, this is like a typical kind of cool little action film. Um, just look at the trailer. I think this is going to be something that people would enjoy picking up. And this is by director Sirio Santiago, who is a favorite director of mine for these type of films. He just really knows how to do it. He knows how to put these films across extremely well. Uh, and uh, I do like the cover. So Richard Hill in a movie that's not Death Stalker. Different. So next up is number 36. And this one stars David Carradine, uh, Richard Hill again, and uh, Lucas Q, who's, who's more than likely the bad guy. And that is the classic Dune Warriors. Yes, from the Roger Corman's Post Nuke Collection. I love that banner there. 
I'm glad the banner's only on the front and not on the side because the issue with me would be if these three movies are put in different numerical order and they're not together, that will bother me. So again, this is a, a gorgeous cover. Uh, if you've never seen this movie, this is one of those post-apocalyptic films. Uh, I think this basically the guy. This is around like water is the resource in this one. Like every there's something different in like in a, all these post-apocalyptic movies. There's always something different. That's you know the the rare valuable resource that people are are fighting for. In this one, I think it's water. Like you know, this is pretty much Mad Max. It's it's a Mad Max style film. Um, like this village gets like rampaged and and people get killed. The survivors like meet up with with David Carradine, and uh, he brings them to this other village, which t starts training them to uh, with the two guys to to be like fighters to fight off like the next time like attack. Think of ants, for instance. <laughs> the next time these uh, guys come in, these marauders come in to attack them. Uh, of course, you know there's always you know that traitor in the group and that type of thing. But a lot of action, really great cover. Uh, uh, there are features on here as well. Again, the uh, this is the unrated director's cut of the film. Apparently, first time anywhere ever ever shown was was here. Original theatrical trailer and the fun facts and trivia. I'm not quite sure how that works. Maybe it's like a a pop up video type of thing. I haven't checked that out yet, but I uh, definitely will. If anybody has code red and they know what the fun facts and trivia thing is, you know, you can clue me in or clue us all in on that. Now the uh, the next one is one that I uh, you guys are so quiet like. You're so quiet. It's one that I that I wanted to grab, and by the way, also by Sergio Santiago. So, Dune Wars also directed by Sergio Santiago. As you can see, there's a theme here. Next up is number fifty-one, and that is uh, one of my favorites, starring uh, Sick Veril and uh, Sick Veril or Cess Veril. Cease. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Starring the girl that's in this film. Uh, there would be a sequel made, but she wouldn't be in it, actually. Uh, and that is Silk. And I remember get, seeing this movie on VHS. Uh, really enjoying it. It was like super cheesy action film, lots of stunts. Uh, you know, the kind of bad, like dirty Harry yet, I guess you want to say. Um this one apparently has a longer European version, uh, and which I probably haven't seen, because uh, I saw Silk on VHS. It's the only time I ever saw it. <laughs> this is a really cool one. Uh, again, this is by Sirio Santiago. Uh, so you're always going to get like those those actors that are going to come in, like Bill McLaughlin. He's in a few of these, right? Uh, he was in the Devastators as well. Uh, Vic Diaz is in this one here. Uh, Jack Star, the superstar, uh, and Italian exploitation actor Mike Monte from Strike Commando uh, actually is in this one as well. This is a really cool one. There's a lot of like actually cool like quotable lines in uh, in this film, and it uh, obviously the cover stands out. But uh, it's a really good film, and it does. The good thing about the Sierra Santiago films that I can tell you right now is that. Uh, they definitely, definitely, definitely. This should have been number. That should have been the last one I showed you. Though. Stand the test of time. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you're right on that. So next up, are, they, are these all okay? Well, because uh, I uh, still got it in order there. Is another of the <clears throat> Roger Corman's post new collection also done? Oh man, Scalder, give Silk another chance, man. And also see Silk too with, I think it's Money Gabriel. I can't remember. Uh, might be, could be. Uh, <laughs> Wheels of Fire. So again, really enjoy this film. Again by Sirius Santiago as well. A lot of these films were written by the same guy as well too, by the way. And I think Wheels of Fire was the first thing he wrote. Frederick Bailey was his name. Um, and as for like you got like uh, Playmate Linda Weismer. Uh, in this one, and Gary Watkins is the. Uh... Oh, D Santiago. Santiago's films were always like pretty, like like high in the sleaze meter, uh, you know, respectably. Like there was not like a gigantic, like wasn't like a, a Lely Slash on the left type thing, but it was always action nudity, action nudity type of thing. 
thankfully, yeah. I know I, that he is, he is doing well. Actually, uh, saw when he was, when he posted he was in hospital. I didn't get firecracker here. It wasn't on the sale. Um, but I had to grab this. So again, another Roger Corn post new collection. Again, directed by Sirius Santiago. If you're a fan of, of violence and nudity, you're, you're going to love these films. And if you thought that was all of the post-nuke Roger Corman collection that I got, no. And if you thought that was all the Sirius Santiago got, no. And here's one, John, that I think you're going to enjoy. Um, and that is The Sisterhood. So, yes, this... Actually, this should have been a series. This should have been like a series of films. So you got these girls at, in like kind of let's... Thanks, B Movie Archive, for coming in. Have a great weekend. I will be back here hopefully tomorrow to do the Arrow video one, the big overview of Arrow video before the for the huge sale starts up. Uh, that way we'll uh, we can get that we can get that going. Hey Corey, going through my code red stuff. I got my code red stuff today. And we're looking at the sisterhood. I love these covers. I got to say, these are the best covers I've gotten from Code Red. Uh, these are awesome. So the sisterhood is like this uh, super fun, cheesy uh, action film. Uh, stars Rebecca Holden, Lynn Holly Johnson. Of course, she was in Free Your Eyes Only. She was the, uh, the, the skater, the figure skater in Free Your Eyes Only. Uh, Chuck Wagner, Robert Dreyer. Really good cast, uh, Barbara Hopper. Definitely a fun film. I wish she would have made more of them. It 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 seemed like it was setting up for like a series of films, but they never followed it up. And there's one more, last but definitely not least. I love this film. One thing about like, and Italian films do this a lot in their films, is that. If you ever seen the movie Blast Fighter, Blast Fighter's got a super gun in it. And, you know, action movies, a lot of action movies have the super gun, especially like foreign action films. They deal, they deal with like this, you know, they'll have this gun and they'll have all this, this really cool stuff. So this is one of these gun movies, one of these movies that has, that has a gun with really cool stuff. And again, it's from the post-apocalyptic collection as well, post-new collection. And that is Equalizer 2000. And that is Richard Norton, who, if you're a fan of Cynthia Rothrock, you've seen him as a good guy. You've seen him as a bad guy. He uh, he does a lot of uh, of different stuff. And uh, th again, this is the original director's cut of the film. Uh, on camera interview with writer director Frederick Bailey, the guy that I mentioned there on one of the other films. Uh, brand new HD negative of the film, original theatrical trailer. I really love these covers. I'm super impressed by the covers. For these, uh, for these films. So Equalizer 2000, if you guys haven't checked it out, definitely one to check out. So there you go. That is my six new Code Reds to go along with my... Tell you. 13 Code Reds that I had before. Uh, Blast Fighter is... Uh, I, got, I had that for me eight films. So that, I don't think that... I'm not sure if that was a Code Red one or not. Although uh, it's a really good film. Eastman's the man, man. And Michael Sepke. But uh, I, I now have almost 20 then. Oh, there we go, almost 20. I got 19 Code Reds in my collection right now. Some of these I will probably be watching this weekend <clears throat> with, my, uh, with my better half. Blast Fighter is a movie that she would like except for one scene. There's a sequence with a, with a baby deer. And for that reason... I can never show her that film. She's like an uh, extreme animal lover. Uh, usually when we watch movies, like action movies or stuff like that, uh, I got to like watch ahead to, uh, to, to let her know because if there's going to be something that's going to like upset her, uh, we, uh, I'll, I'll say, okay, this is not one for you type of thing. But yeah, there you go, guys. I got 19 new. I got like, six new and uh, cold reds. That's 19 in total. Which is pretty, pretty damn good. There is some... <laughs> there's some really good stuff that are going to be available through that sale. 
Uh, let me just check something here. So the sale's starting Monday then, I think. Code Red is expensive to get in Canada, usually. Like, it was only through sale times, John, that I can actually get Code Red. Uh, and even then, it's like, it's got to be a pretty good sale, and it's got to be, like, pretty tempting. I, I don't normally... Normally, initially, I didn't get Code Red just on principle of the fact that the... Uh, <laughs> that Bill pretty much doesn't like us Canadian dudes <laughs> from an interview that he did once saying that he, he didn't ship to Canada anymore because we steal all his stuff and uh, he, he's a different character. Uh, he's, he's a product of a different era. I just realized I got Code Red v DVDs. You want to see those? Uh, yeah, I got a few Code Red DVDs. Hold on. I have more code red. I forgot about it. There was another sale. Uh, the interview that he... There was an interview I th that he did that was really good. I think it was Pure Cinema. Uh, check it out for sure. Did I just drop that? Of course I did. And I can actually show you the very first code red I got was at a video game shop that had secondhand stuff but I gotta do these I'm sure this is code right yes it is and it's maybe it's before they started numbering their stuff so I'll show it to you first and uh start with Sander Castle of Last Stars on the left and it is right up my alley because you guys know I like this style of film and this is Teenage Hitchhikers. Does this not look like something Vinegar Syndrome would put out? Like, in all seriousness? So this is Teenage Hitchhikers. It's a, uh, a DVD. I, I do not know if this was ever uh, a Blu-ray. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But this one was done way, way back in 2010. So this is 2010 Code Red, so wow, nine years ago. So this is an early Code Red release. I'm not quite sure when Code Red got started, so I'm not sure how early of a release that uh, Teenage Hitchhikers would have been. Uh, maybe when you guys know. I'm actually kind of curious. I'll be honest with you, John, I have not seen this movie like since, since I got it. Uh, so it's been a long time. And after a while of watching so much of this stuff and having so many Vinegar Syndrome titles in my head, I would be lying if I told you I remember. Uh, doesn't mean it's not good. It's actually one that I'm, I'm thinking about watching soon because uh, you know me, John. I like this style of film. So I'm trying to find something there for you. I got more. Movies to show you, by the way, guys. Because there's something I'm kind of curious about. Well, okay, so Code Red started out in 2006. So they were only like four years in when, uh, when this one came out. So pretty good. And this one does have a commentary with Bill Lamond. Uh, it was the cinematographer on the film here. So this has a all, all manners of the 70s silliness ensues, including an encounter with a hapless escaped rapist and an all-out orgy in a hippie commune. Does that answer your question? <laughs> I think that answers your question, yeah. Uh, next up, okay, let's get these in right order. Die, you son of a bitch. Ants. Is the two disc DVD collector's edition of this is 09 2. So I'm guessing maybe 09 was the Blu ray edition. Dead Pit. So I think this the blue the Blu ray this one is out of print, but the DVD, you know, 
pretty much I think an easy find. Uh, just a fun, really like cheesy, kind of cool little film that I like. I remember like it from back in the day. I used to watch it on uh, on VHS. This is the like, uh, uncut version. Apparently, it was too violent for an R rating. Uh, brand new widescreen uh, transfer audio commentary here. Uh, there's a second disc with behind the scenes footage. I don't think I've ever looked at second disc. Uh, Dead Pit mini movie with alternate makeup sequence. I don't know. I do look at second disc then. So yeah, I've never looked at second disc of this film. So this is Dead Pit. The two disc release. So I had to grab that during the last sale. Next up is a Canuck exploitation one that I like it more every time I see it. And that is Ghost Keeper, which is a film about a uh, Wendigo, actually. A cool little film. I, uh, I particularly enjoyed this one. It's very Canadian. Basically, the plot line of this film is they're skidooing, and a storm comes up, and they got to go into this, like, uh, this lodge, this kind of this old ski lodge that's that's uh, that's not being ran anymore. Uh, well, you know, it's it's out of, and there's this there's the lady there. It's weird. It's a different film. Uh, it takes some turns. Like there was certain things that I thought were going to happen when I was watching this film, and then it just swerved in a different direction. And I was like. That's an interesting take on it. I would, I'm not sure if I would have done that way myself, but it's definitely an interesting take on, uh, on the films. So, again, uh, fun little one. If you like exploitation, if you like that type of stuff, if you like winter horror films, for instance, this is a winter horror film. Um, there's an auto commentary with the director on here and uh, two of the stars of the film. There's a uh, featurette interview with the Ghost Keeper, and there's some Code Red trailers on here as well. And it's got a strange, strange looking uh, uh, DVD thing on the inside, which really, really, literally, I can't think uh, what the hell this has to do with Ghost Keeper, but okay, we'll go with that. Here you go. Next up is a couple of the Fred Williamson collection. Actually, no, there's one more for the Fred Williamson collection. These are out of order, damn it. I hate this. I got to put these in order. <laughs> okay, so this one is stars Eric Stoltz, not Fred Williamson, Eric Stoltz, and uh, God, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. I picked this up because I wanted to watch it again, but I haven't got around to it yet. There's so much I got to get around to. I want to retire. I want to retire, like retire tomorrow and just like start watching these films and writing up reviews and starting a website and doing and filming and stuff like that. Uh, that's my dream, guys. That's that's my retirement dream. Pretty boring, isn't it? And maybe traveling, but uh, so it is running hot with Eric Stoltz. I love that cover. It's definitely an eye catcher. And that's uh, Monica Cariaco in the uh, in the film. And Stuart McGolan's in this as the uh, cop. So Stuart McGolan, you guys are probably going to recognize from the series Rockford Files. There he is, right there. Uh, done back in 1984 in, through, in the tradition of Badlands and True Romance. So, kind of remember this one. I kind of remember having fun with this one, actually, when I saw it first. This is definitely a, an horror film. It's not a, uh, this, this is no PG, that's for sure. Got to put these in order. So, the last two are two Fred Wimson films because I'm a big Fred Wimson. I'm a big black exploitation. You guys know, you saw the stuff that I got from Vinegar Syndrome. So you guys know that I love my black exploitation. And add that one with Stuart Whitman in the black exploitation film and the classic Fred look at my suit, Williamson. Uh, this is Mean Johnny Barrows. So Fred Williamson like directed and produced <laughs> Time for TV movie podcast. That's it. The feature. Honestly, uh, until I had like guested a couple times on uh, on Just the Dis with uh, with Brian, my channel may not have literally been out. I was thinking of just making a podcast and like moving away because uh, some of my my taped like uh, videos 
were uh, like my reviews and stuff like that weren't you know they weren't doing the greatest to be completely honest with you and I was starting to get a bit down and it was the movie club and like this here and the idea behind uh, behind like getting to like get get out of my comfort zone and actually tape some podcasts and stuff like that that actually kind of revitalized me when it comes to uh, when it came to this so we'll see how long this lasts before I uh, I got to switch it up a bit again I like the movie club aspect but there are some other things that I want to do with this uh, with this channel and I've even thought about branching out into a second channel but that's gonna include branding and getting new people uh, like getting people to come in and watch the other channel as well one of the uh, my biggest disappointments with my channel uh, is that uh, when I talk about other things like uh, what I, I, I love comics I, I I like video games uh, you know I was playing Dead by Daylight for like four hours last night uh, and uh, but uh, it's like it's like radio silence when I talk about that sometimes on here which which is the same shame really uh, but uh, I was really happy when my wrestling went well but uh, we'll see the movie pot the movie club portion of this channel is my favorite portion I, I like the interactivity of it and I learn a lot actually talking to you guys as uh, you know it's, I got a lot of stuff around here I, I, I love film but uh, I learn a lot from you guys I, I get a lot of films just like talking to you guys and hearing you guys talk to one another uh, that's that's kind of, that's one of the highlights of my day sometimes and uh, yeah and by the way thank you down that and uh, means a lot it really really does because sometimes it's uh, days aren't that easy uh, so this one here what's really cool about this one is it's got Leon Isaac Kennedy who played too sweet of course in uh, in one of, one of my favorite black exploitation films the penitentiary series and it also has Elliot Gould who's of course you know from MASH Canadian guys he's Canadian right I always think he should be yeah. if he's not Canadian he should be <laughs> okay so I got number two in the Fred Williams's signature collection and this one I don't think this was quite as good as uh, me and Johnny Barrows I'm trying to remember which one was best I think this one was the best one um, but uh, again directed by Fred Williams and produced by him and uh, although it doesn't say produced yes it's okay and that is Death Journey it, of course the uncut director's edition again for uh, Death Journey pretty simple film basically he plays the Jesse Croder character again now Jesse Croder is a character that he that he's played in like in uh, I think he's played in other films it's like, like a series uh, of like Croder films and this is like the the one that starts so this is the first one what was that rewind I, I'm kind of curious okay I just missed something there What is that from, Scholder? But this is Death Journey. Again, you know, he managed to get some people in the in the film, like Bruno Cur Bernard Kirby's in this one, Hadi Dobbs, uh, Derville Martin, who was in Do who was in uh, Dolomite, is in this film here as well. He's he's always able to get people into his uh, into his films so quickly to go through this like you know a quick overview so this for people that just came in or so this is my this is this there's blu-ray section which show you these are the DVDs that I got from from code red most of those we got during a sale except one that I got at a uh, video shop my uh, regular code red releases are the number one the electric chair which apparently I haven't watched gotta watch this one if anybody's seen it let me know house on the edge of the park highly recommended really like this one uh, not good if you're squeamish or if like say oh really oh nice link it down in the uh, comment section down down below um, so people like if people come in and watch the video later on uh, they'll be able to like hit on it because sometimes like stuff doesn't show up in my uh, in my feed or it only shows up for like a certain period of time you can't like hit on it 
but uh, like definitely link it down in the comments down below. That way if anybody comes in and they're looking at this portion of it, they can just go right to it. Congratulations, by the way. Sweet 16, another serious recommendation. You know, get this, get the 88 Films one. Either way, just make sure you get this film. It's really good. Cutthroats 9, if you're a if you're like a Western fan and you don't mind gore, uh, if you're like a, a Sam Peckinpah style Western fan, it's going to have gore that's probably worse than some of the Sam Peckinpah stuff. There is some pretty gory stuff, throat, throat ripping and stuff like that at the back of this film, uh, on, the, on the back of the film that I can't show you. The Force, which I recommend if you like cheesy stuff, if you like Don't Go in the Woods Alone, then you're gonna like the uh, then you're gonna like the Force. It's is it good? No, it's not a good movie. It's a bad movie, but know that going in, and you're gonna enjoy it. Have a few drinks, you know, make a kind of make make a game out of it. Um, that's what I normally do my, with some of my friends. Well, I don't have a lot of movie friends around here right now, but when I did, I have a lot of movie friends around. That's what we do. Hey, Sasha, you're coming out the end again. Uh, so, so uh black candles with by jose ramon lorez uh again if you like nudity this is the movie for you hide and go shriek extremely underrated slasher film not enough people know about this film <laughs> uh I would think Savage Street should be more of, I wouldn't say be anti-feminist, that would be the opposite, wouldn't it? Because it's like an empowerment, like Linda Blair kind of like, she kicks ass. It's like an empowerment, I, I would think of it as an empowerment film. I don't know, I'm not, uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll go with that. Female empowerment. Uh, I can go shriek, a really great little uh, slasher film. Hills of Eyes 3, Mind Ripper, don't remember it. <laughs> Uh, one dark night. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Uh, Black book. I saw a the TV series Black book. Black books. Uh, the see Savage Streets was directed by the guy that directed Friday Thirteenth Part Five, and uh, Danny Steinman. And Danny Steinman was all about like he was all about the uh, hey heroic waffle. <laughs> Dude, I'm really, really sorry to hear that. It's worth it, dude. Like, family, spouse, all that comes first. So, yes, definitely worth it. See, see all this here? If, if something was was happening to my kids or anybody or or you know or my uh or or my or my better half this and this could like would could change that gone in a second um is it worth it collecting again it, it uh, it's up to you that's 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 a personal decision like for me it was like i'll be honest with you i i started collecting uh three or four times but i moved a lot and uh, when I, before, I was uh, in a different, like, prior to time in my life. And every time it seemed like I, I'd started to collect, every time it seemed like I was getting somewhere, uh, something would happen. And I would have to either sell everything off or in some places, sometimes I got, things were, were, were stolen from me. Um, so around eight or nine years ago, yeah, around nine years ago, I started working a new job and I said, okay, I bought like this Lone Ranger box set. And that's exactly what, what he said right there. And, and I felt good. It made me feel good. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take the time and I'm going to start <laughs> moving again. Uh, but except these are coming with me uh, in, in a few years. And uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to start again. I'm, I'm settled down. I'm, I'm older. I'm gonna. I enjoy movies. I enjoy collecting. That's the thing. I I, I love collecting this stuff. So uh, so for me it was worth it. Um, no, no, no problem. Like always, you know, 
spouse, you know, spouse health, your health, all that goes first. Uh, but afterwards, like when you, if you, this, you know, want to get to something that's going to make you feel better, going to make you, going to make you like enjoy. Um, if you enjoy it, if it's something that like gets you, for me, this, like I do, do this and I, I, I game a bit. And that's my little reason. That's like if I'm having a tough week or a tough, tough time, I just come down here and I pick something out and I just let it drift. And uh, that's how I do it. So I hope that answered your question. I'm sorry if, if that's not a, it wasn't a good answer, but uh, that's the, you know, the, that's honest. That's, that, that's exactly what I think. Exactly. Dude, if you got a page like Heroic where people can like give donations and stuff like that, I got a comment section right down, down below there. Just, you know, you can put it down there and, uh, and, and people could help out. So if you don't, you can always think up like there's things like uh, like a GoFundMe or like uh, yeah, usually GoFundMe and you go, but usually GoFundMe is what you uh, what what you want to look for something like that, especially if you're having a lot of like problems with like uh, with doctor bills or issues like that. And I know over there in the U.S., you know, unfortunately healthcare is not as of yet free, but uh, hopefully one day you know you guys will get there because because uh, it should be because it should be universally. I uh, I worked in the health industry for a while, and uh, and I dealt a lot with uh, with the U.S. and their uh, and over there. I know I haven't seen it. I don't. I haven't seen that film. But if you do have one, feel free. Or if you get one later on, and you want to come back to this video right here, and you want to link it down below, feel free to do so. Not a problem. So. I'm getting a call from my better half, so I gotta go. Thank you for watching. I am Aaron. This has been the Movie Club. Well, you are the Movie Club. You are awesome, and I'll see you soon. Or she'll kill me.